tell they knew they heard what we said we'd said ex-muslim but they just pretended like they didn't hear it and just walked past because they thought you know don't want to get stuck into this um we did have a lot of people wanting to debate us so at one point um we'd, uh, we'd actually blocked the pathway because there's like five guys all trying to debate us and telling us why did you leave islam you got to come back to islam at one point a girl was walking past and we'd said like ex-muslim society and she turned around and she said is this even allowed and we just we didn't know how to react to that like why would you i don't know why would you think that it's not allowed to have an ex-muslim you know uh, representative or anything like that there As I got older, I, be I became quite religious when I became about 17. Uh, and I became quite comfortable in that identity. And naturally, all of my school friends wore it. So I didn't, I, di I didn't know how to not wear it. I didn't know how to, to dress any differently. And I, would, I was still trying to incorporate my punk into it. So I used to wear like a floor lamp jilbab with like a dog bracelet and um, I once wore uh, like black lipstick with my hijab as well and, I, and I, I sort of, I would still do it and I would try to insert myself so I wasn't allowed to wear nail varnish at school so I would wear black mendy on my nails which is something I could get away with. When I've kind of decided that okay I'm not in this anymore uh, faith wise, um, it's a funny thing because to get to that point I didn't know you could do that and when I had been like actually this doesn't make sense to me anymore. Um, I thought I was the only uh, Muslim agnostic atheist in the world, and I know that's a bit that's a bit stupid. But it's it, it, like the more I've talked to people who are ex-Muslims, the more I realise actually, even like 80% of people thought that they were the only person in the world who's done that because it's such a isolating thing, which is why we're doing what we're doing here. My dad had like gave this stupid story of how I he needed my password for my phone to um, to call Orange or something just to you know to, to, to you know check the contract or something like that. And so I gave him his, my password and he went into my phone. I stood there the whole time just like no, I'm just you know I'm gonna stand here, and make sure you don't go into anything that I don't want you to. Uh, anyway, so that night um, my mum uh, came into my room about four o'clock in the morning or something and I woke up when she came in um, and <laughs> she went for my phone and so I grabbed my phone and just like lay on it just to you know just because just instinct thing <laughs> and my mum like wrestled it away from me <laughs> while I was half asleep I was just like I didn't really understand she was just like saying give, give me your phone give me your phone and I'm just like no 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 mine <laughs> this is sleep and then she won um, <laughs> Yeah, she, she managed to get my phone away from me and I fell asleep <laughs> after that. And then next thing I know, um, they uh, were waking me up uh, to take me into their uh, room to uh, talk about, you know, uh, how... Well, it worked out that I had a boyfriend, basically. Yeah. <laughs> finished what was it um, juniors and um, it was it came to choosing the secondary school right and I had like a choice of like five um, and my parents immediately said no you're going to an all boys school um, because you can't hang around with girls um, yeah so basically they they sent me to a boys school so you know I wouldn't talk to girls and I wouldn't get a girlfriend and stuff but actually, it's like, it turns out I'm gay, <laughs> so they sent me to like a boys school, like, like um, not, not, um, try to try to not get me to talk to girls and stuff, so um, that didn't really work out well, so I was just surrounded by guys. And... 